it's helpful and meaningful to live there because you can create value, you can create knowledge, first of all, you can create value, you can maybe transfer value, you can share value, you can maybe use that as a bridge from real life to game world. Uh, and by that, we speak about the metaverse then in whatever way. Big shout out to Tracy and Matthias for joining us today at the start of season two. It was only a few months ago, well, almost a year now, that we started this podcast series, originally as FinTech and then FinTech and Web3. Also a big thank you to all our friends at CFT for being the platform that hosts this, and particularly to Melik and Paul who helped run the show. Um, we're excited to kick off season two, episode 30. And we just found out yesterday that we've been nominated or awarded or something as the number three or top three Web3 podcast in the world by Your Story, uh, an Indian media outlet. So there you are, little plug. According to Your Story, we're a top three uh, Web3 podcast now. So if you, ha if you haven't been listening, sign up, subscribe, tell your yep, friends so about thank us. Thank you to the users, Ronit. Thank, thank, thank you to the users. Thank you to the Thank listeners. you to the audience. And a particularly big thank you to all the great speakers we've had. We've had like 40 or 50 amazing speakers. And let's talk about today's uh, guests. Uh, maybe Tracy, Matthias, you could just give us a little introduction about yourselves. You've got some amazing backstories, I know. I don't want to butcher them. So why don't you just give us your little TLDR about who you are and what you are, and then we'll dive into trade light and Mogaland and so on. Absolutely. Um, so I'll jump in um, and you know save the more exciting bit for later. But um, Matthias and I actually met at um, Fedor, and this is where I'm just going to drop the bomb. Um, so I have a background in um, traditional banking, in wholesale and retail, and then also um, switched lane to fintech for many, many years. And I'm quite proud to say that I joined fintech quite early on when the term wasn't coined and known globally either. And um, very, very luckily, um, I got exposure into a lot of alternative technology and use cases within this space. And um, yeah, about two years ago, Matthias and I got together and said, come on, let's do this, right? Let's do something cool and do something very different. So we took our experiences from um, previous careers, um, from product, from technology, from BAS, from SaaS, from project management, from curiosity, daringness, risk-taking attitudes to um, end up where we are today. So Matthias, off to you. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Ronan and Gaurav, for having us. It's absolutely exciting to be on your podcast. Um, great. Um, so, um, yeah, Tracy, uh, there's not a lot I can add. Maybe I can add, we took also our learnings from dealing with the consumers, uh, with our bank customers uh, mm. in particular. And, of course, uh, we, we took all our learning also when it comes to how to scale a regulated concept like a bank. Uh, mm -hmm. to deal with the regulator, with a regional regulator like the BaFin or the Bundesbank or even the ECB as a pan-European regulator. Um, uh, and that made it happen then actually to enter, to leave the, the home turf of financial services, maybe as it is defined now, uh, and to break down the demarcation and, and maybe enter into a new uh, environment, nevertheless, and not leaving finance as a topic behind, you know, so that is, uh, that is about what we can then speak about, about Mogeland and Tradelight, um, just to my, uh, so to say, CB, uh, Fido Bank and Fido Solutions was the kind of second bank and group I founded and co-founded. The first one was in the mid-90s for the elderly people on this call, you know, uh, in the mid, in something like 1994, we did have our go to market with the first discount broker uh, on Central Europe, uh, which actually was named DRB Bank, which then later got sold to uh, Quartal Consors. Uh, and DRB, which stands for Direct Anlage Bank, was the first one of its kind to allow people trading without any advice or sales talk, right? Uh, at a very low commission. And we started believe it or not, as a phone bank uh, those days. Um, that sounds really creepy, I know. And, uh, <laughs> and 
and and contributed this two years later into the first bank on America Online, another kind of uh, name that might uh, call for uh, some some pictures out of the past, uh, and then started on um, browser-based trading in 1996. Uh, and when we did IPO DRB Bank, uh, we had about 98% of our transactions already on uh, on the online version and the web. And all this experience with those consumers and customers of these days, and then later in FIDO, when we've been the first one to introduce uh, actually as a regulated concept, crypto trading back in 2012, uh, and so on and so forth. All this is kind of um, now being being poured into the concept of trade line and Mogulan. I, I loved the history, Matthias. I, I actually remember Kotal, Consoles, Comdirect, and uh, yeah. And, uh, so I was like, uh, those were um, the days. <laughs> cycles come and go. Um, yeah. I remember the valuation of some of those companies in 1999, 2000. I can tell you, I just spoke about it the other day because since then I can't go to a one Italian place in Munich anymore because they did buy strongly DAB bank shares actually uh, at the very peak. And, and they told us during the dinner and they said, yeah, Matthias, we did buy for a huge amount. And by the way, on a loan. Uh, so they did, yeah, exactly. So they did buy the B Bank shares. And I just told my wife those days, I'm so sorry, I love that place, but we can't come back. Yes, never give financial advice to. Yeah, yeah. No, never, yeah. never. I think yeah. a two billion valuation of DAB Bank those days. Yeah. 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 But let's pivot back to TradeLite. Let's talk yeah. about TradeLite and Mogaland and GameFi. But let's start with why, why TradeLite? What was the Eureka moment? What Tracy led you and Matthias and others to say, we need to do TradeLite, we need to do Mogaland. So sort of unwind and focus in on TradeLite. Um, so, you know, Matthias already mentioned his long history in the um, brokerage space. And through all these years, one of the things that he had observed, and as well as you know, myself working in this space, is that most of the people, right, and we're talking about nearly all the retail traders, um, mm -hmm. are actually doing um, something that we call day trading, which is a really nice way of saying basically they're gambling, right? And the reason for that is because you know financial literacy and know-how when it comes to trading and investment is simply not taught in school, right? And for most places in the world, even today, it's still not really taught. It's not talked about. Um, it's becoming more and more of a topic, right, in um, the private sector. But it's not really something that the, um, let's say, regulators or institutions invest money in. We found incredible statistics that says for every dollar of education inv invested in finance, $30 is invested in marketing. Right. So it's extremely difficult for a normal person to get the right information they need to make decisions in this space. Right. And through our own experience, we realized, OK, what is the way to change that? Right. How can we do something that actually can reach out to people, can give them the opportunity to learn a bit more and also give them the opportunity to really practice their skills in the market without putting their savings on the line? Right. Without the same level of risk. So this is the inspiration for TradeLight is to look for a different means and ways to engage people, to promote financial literacy, but also let them feel the excitement and the thrill of the market so that it's not boring and classroom-like. And Tracy, and for the people watching this on video, they can obviously see what's behind you. Uh, yeah. the listen, <laughs> listeners in audio or in the podcast version, behind Tracy is this amazingly colorful scene. And it says, Mogaland, world's first learn to earn games metaverse for making financial literacy fun and easy. And on the other side, it's got a little CFT logo and stuff. We'll come back to that plug later. But uh, Mogaland, first, world's first learn to earn games metaverse. Let's unpack it. Metaverse, literacy, learn to earn, and games. Maybe you should just start at Metaverse, what do we mean by metaverse? Are we, is this like a virtual land thing going on behind you? What is, what is a metaverse? Yeah, so um, metaverse is actually a concept that's going on, I think, for several decades, right? But it's really um, synthesized these days because mm. of technology, um, especially developed in the gaming industry. 
So Metaverse is a virtual space. Basically, some people say it has to be 3D, but I'm, I myself think that's you know, argumentative. It's a virtual space where people meet and interact and mm. socialize with each other. Um, maybe they perform financial activities. Maybe they perform um, trading or commerce activities, or they simply play games together. And this is um, what is typically meant by metaverse. A lot of new concepts have been introduced. So for example, um, marketing, business to business, business to consumers, these additional use cases have been brought in. Um, mm. so this is what we mean is a world, right? Where you can meet and perform different activities. So that's um, the metaverse bit. And what is Mogul? Is like Mogul land a space in this metaverse? And is it a, do you have your, like your own metaverse that you've built using some kind of one of these games engines? Yeah. Um, or are you hosted on someone else's metaverse? Just tell us practically what it. Yeah, so we're trying to create, we're trying to follow the concept of metaverse and we see um, a lot of this concept being used, especially in gaming. Um, and mm -hmm. actually the, I would say the important bit here is actually to talk about GameFi. Right, because GameFi is actually the combination, the fusion of mm. games and decentralized finance, right? And this is um, okay. a concept that is often being combined with metaverse because mm. when people meet, they want to have fun together, they play together. This engagement attracts people to be there, right? So it's like, you know, you form a sports team, you form a gaming sports, esports team, stuff mm. like this. Um, and by combining that with decentralized finance, Therefore, having the opportunity to create, exchange, trade, or even earn um, crypto token-based assets um, is becoming, of course, a, a huge attraction actually for a lot of gamers. Because um, we all know that actually people spend a lot of time in games, even a lot of us who um, maybe don't want to admit that we're gamers, most likely we are. Um, there is already about 3.5 three billion people in this world who are considered gamers. So it's mm. very likely that we're all amongst them. Um, gamers spend a lot of time in their games, right? And you, whenever you invest time and energy or even your own money into something, um, you want to get something out of it. And typically when you play a game, you get fun out of it. That's your reward. Um, mm. But game fine is basically allowing gamers to get even more out of it. Right. By investing your time, improving your skills, proving your level and beating others and get on the top of the leaderboard, you have the opportunity to even earn something. Um, mm. And this earning is based on the decentralized finance concept, which is basically the community believing in the value and co-creating this value. Mm. I want to bring Matthias back in the conversation. You know, you've seen many cycles, as we just discussed, this metaverse thing. Is it just hype and BS? Like, whoa. How does this, you, Trace has given us her view on GameFi. Why don't you walk us through GameFi as well and give us your perspective? Yeah, I'm, I'm, and, and you will not be surprised that actually GameFi, uh, I, I fully find that phrase and, and that topic to be super interesting. I, I, I will start my, my perspective coming out of the financial world, actually. So and this is uh, also then illustrating the fusion that is happening in the team or by the team members of uh, TradeLight, actually, because uh, you know, uh, having Tracy as our CEO, being from, from banking, the strong tech background, and being a dedicated and passionate gamer herself, uh, we have then, if I may uh, put meat on the plate, then also saying, okay, we, I, I represent more maybe the incumbent. Imagine, I do represent the incumbent financial services world. And... <laughs> bad news for incumbents. And uh, on the other side, we have the, the strong game component to our team, like our CTO, Dom Darian and so on, who are really dedicated gamers and, and from the game industry. Now, game fight to me is in particular exciting because, you know, when it's, if there's one thing we learned uh, in, in the last 25 plus years of, of my, at least financial banking, fi finance and banking career, People don't like banks. First of all, it's a love-hate relation. Uh, FinTech changed that a bit, but we will come back to normal. Don't worry. Uh, once fin FinTech starts charging them and so on and so forth, it's not a free lunch. Uh, services are, are regulated and limited and, and, and so on. Uh, incumbent managers are taking over FinTech companies, which make a FinTech company an incumbent and so on. So, you know, we will see that um, uh, this space is needed, but it's not really loved by people. Uh, people do not like, like to pay for that. 
while in the same time we understand that people love to pay for video games people love to spend money in there um, and to spend way more money actually even in free to play games than they would pay for their current account um, so you know of course this is apples and peas somehow in its comparison nevertheless we combine it by giving trade light and Mogoland the sweet spot of finance finance uh, markets financial topics, financial data, financial information. It's all about finance, right? And this is also where the name MOGA comes from. It's money and games. So this is what it is about. So we have a clear sweet spot on, on the line, first of all. Now, once you listen to Tracy and all the technical opportunities you have there, uh, we come back to what I said before. It's like, yes, we leave the area of regulated banks, but we are not leaving finance behind. You know, so we take the finance topic and the finance data, but we implement it into the games world. Do I think that, and then I, I might say, Ronit, call it whatever you want to call it, call it metaverse. Fine. Be my guest. Will it be bullshit? Yes. Oh, sorry. BS. Uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> it's okay. I'm the banker here, right? I so, know. <laughs> Will it keep you end? You're always gonna worry about these gray head guys, man. Sheesh. Yeah, well, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, will it be BS? <clears throat> well, for the ones who have no impact, who have no meaning, and who just do this in order to make money quick, yes, we will see them failing. Absolutely, this is what people now try to package and wrap up as crypto winter. No, it's not crypto winter. It's just a fallout of useless concepts actually. Uh, and our, our uh, job and, and uh, challenge will be that our Tracy's and mine challenge will be that we make it a meaningful environment that allows people to create an ecosystem that allows an ecosystem to be created in a value centric way. Uh, and by that, if that is then the metaverse, fine, I'm happy to be in it. Let me bring my partner in crime, Gaurav, into the conversation as we're listening politely and I'm sure he's got some very smart questions, more about your business, your operations, and things like that. So, Gaurav, over to you. And that's an awesome waistcoat you got on. I don't know. It matches the background beautifully. Thanks so much, brother. It's 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 been a pleasure listening. To be to be quite honest, there's there's so much to talk about here, especially given that you know you both come back from such uh, you know very very deep fintech backgrounds and core banking. You know, yes, on the whole, definitely, I agree with you. You know, people fintech to learn or financial instruments or, or learning is is very dry uh, and if you gamified it that's you know that's amazing but you know what i'd love to understand and, and if you could communicate this a bit more to the audience is who who are you developing for that's actually come to your platform to start with so what i'd love to understand is are you making this accessible for people who are savvy when it comes to the metaverse, i.e. I need a wallet, I need a setup, I need to do this? Or is, is Mogulan and Tradelight looking at building this for people that aren't metaverse savvy as well? So Because perhaps, let's just say, I'm of a certain age, of a certain age, but I would love to be more educated. I'd love to also earn at the same time. It sounds like a win-win situation. How are you approaching that uh, consumption? And that, that was something I'd love for you to walk us through as a product to start with, step one, yeah. Yeah, and actually this is the part about learning financial literacy, right? So we see that, you know, it's not just the um, banking apps or trading apps that people um, actually find, let's say too challenging to find the relevance, how to really connect that with their goals in life. We also see that play to earn games also created a lot of alternative earning opportunities for people is still behind a huge barrier to entry. So that's why we want to really focus on financial literacy, one. And secondly, um, Mogolan will be a free to play concept. So, um, you know, in gaming, free to play means that it's free to enter, free to download. And either you can invest a lot of time and patience, right, and then it remains free or you have opportunity to do micro spending or reward ads and you know, unlock yourself to additional um, in-game features or having to do something faster. So this is the concept we're adopting for Mogalen. So now the user journey we're hoping for our players is that you can enter this free to play world. And while you're playing, you're learning more about finance and it's not just 
um, traditional finance topics that we're introducing. Um, we're also introducing some fintech topics. That's why we're partnering with CFT. Um, and we want to be able to actually educate you about what's GameFi, what's crypto, what are tokens, what does NFT mean for us while you play this game for free. And once you feel ready and has the then opportunities to enter into the DeFi space, but it will always be optional. And once you enter, then of course you can start to learn to earn because through your gaming learning effort, um, you can then earn token-based rewards. So this is the journey that we are imagining. That's that we are implementing actually. Yeah. And, Gaurav, uh, and Gaurav, to your question regarding, do you need a uh, kind of uh, background in metaverse? Uh, do you need an whatever education on it? Be savvy in OpenSea or whatsoever, or or in finance? No, not at all. Not at all. This is exactly you know. This is when when we started uh, as mentioned trading on crypto and so on. Everybody needs to have whatever kind of a software skill set already to open up a wallet and so on. It's pretty annoying. Uh, and, and this is definitely not what we are aiming at. We are absolutely aiming at anybody, everybody out there really not being uh, capable in no meaning to those two topics, uh, not having any experience. And, uh, and Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's definitely also the case that we do not want to show up as an educational game or as a learning game, right? So this is absolutely not what you will see or read and, and hear about. It's more like, first of all, the game is fun, fun, fun. It is delivering you the option to become better, better, better and improve. And it's just like learning about real estate when you play a round of Monopoly. You know, nobody ever would approach you and say, oh, oh, let me put it like this. Nobody, my parents didn't walk up to me and said, son, today you learn about real estate. We play Monopoly. That's not what we did. You know, we just started playing the game. And by playing, and this is what Tracy can elaborate then on massively, by playing and by the rule set of the game, we learn about that topic, right? And coincidentally, we use real data for this, right? So what you, whatever is your learn experience or play experience and you're learning out of that, you did it on real data and that makes it specific. Now, it's very interesting, right? You're, you're taking an approach, a very unique approach to presenting, you know, Trade Light and Moga Land. Now, in your... Oh, you know your your destination or your product build is Mogulan or Trade Light, and what you're doing from your gamification dictated by the people that are paying or incentivizing the gamers, or is it done by you and then you find people to fill in the gap? How are you actually doing the unit economics? So, by that, what I'm trying to understand is the journey of the game for learning. Is it dictated by you or is it dictated by market forces? What's the approach you all are taking to designing this uh, today or tomorrow? So um, we have a um, user journey where um, user is in this world and they'll be guided to play different games and challenges to actually protect and defend their world because there'll be enemies they have to fight and there'll be you know, gadgets they need to earn, decorations and skins. And um, in these gaming activities, there will be a lot of uh, mini games in this world. A part of the mini games will be um, more knowledge based so that you're playing different battles or games, but you need to consume knowledge and improve your knowledge and remember certain information, definition and skills in order to um, win, basically. Um, and then there are some other games, as Matthias mentioned, we're actually leveraging real and sometimes live financial market data. And those are the games where you're proving your skills, right? So you're applying what you've learned and using real world situations and scenarios to um, make decisions to prove within the game that you actually um, can achieve a certain financial goal based on um, what you've learned. So both of these experiences exist. And um, whether third parties um, would dictate the learning actually that would be no, because although we're creating a land and a metaverse, um, in order to maintain the quality and make sure that it is contributing to people's financial literacy and while being fun at the same time, um, Trailine is the one that is actually creating and curating the content 
right? So we do work with third party providers and um, partners, so providers mainly from the game industry and partners from financial service or financial education. Um, but we really try to pick um, the partners and providers that can understand our vision and have the experience and skills or content to contribute to that vision, right? So that the experience for the player is very much, um, let's say, quality driven rather than turning it into um, something like a social media where oh, and anybody can, can chip in. Right. So that's what we um, want to differentiate a little bit from what is already available. Sounds like a very, very large undertaking on the planning side, right? Uh, you know, first you're talking about topics, journeys, and then you're building the, the actual gaming interaction that would, in, you know, get people excited to engage in this, in this journey and go along step by step, not including just the whole landscape that you develop, but the mini games too. How long does it take? To, to build out these roadmaps? Are you doing all of this in-house with your own gaming teams and there are massive brainstorming sessions where you have these journeys? I mean, does it happen over three months? Does it happen over weeks? You know, can you tell us, like, it'd be super interesting to learn because if you look at anything from a gaming planning portfolio, for you, you can keep adding on to it, right? You don't need to do a release and then that's the release, you know? Everyone can, you can keep building and building and building and building to it. So. What does it look like from your planning today? I don't want you to obviously give us any spoilers, but it'd be super interesting to see how far along you've mapped and what, how far you are in delivering uh, you know, what is on mobile and, and the interactions. Yeah. Um, so you, you were right there about the game. Actually, it's evolutionary, as we call it. So it will continue to evolve, right? And you know, yes, it's a lot of work. But if you think about a lot of the online games, um, Wolf Warcraft, probably a lot of people here knows that, right? It starts with something really basic, and then you know they have more and more features and seasons and new characters. But it's still very much driven and coordinated by the creators' team themselves, right? So it's not. Yes, it sounds really cool and crazy um, what we're doing, but at the same time, it's not a implementation style that's not been done before. So thankfully we have a lot of colleagues who also have a lot of experiences from the gaming industry who knows how to manage this. And um, in terms of our roadmap, um, actually we started Trailive first as a B2B company and we did a lot of different projects in our earlier days. And Mogulan is our first title that we are launching ourselves, basically, in, in terms of um, publishing and launching a game. So um, we have done some demo versions where we invited friends and family to participate. Um, we've played a lot of the games. We got a lot of feedback um, from the players, from the stakeholders, which um, was super exciting. And now we are actually doing um, a lot of redesign and we are also making the game available cross-platform. So it will be um, on mobile app and certain features will also be available on web so that there is um, the possibilities for our ecosystem partners who can easily share that right, via their platform because it will also be on web partially. Um, at the end of September, we're making available the alpha version of both platforms, mobile and web. And um, in October, we will be doing a lot of testing. We'll invite people we know to do play tests. We'll go out and you know, do play testing with random target audience and see what the feedback is and continue to improve, right? So um, before the end of this year, we want to have versions that we can use with our ecosystem partners. So um, financial media publishers, financial influencers that we're speaking to, um, as well as CFTE and a lot of other organizations, even from the more traditional financial services space. Um, we hope that we can leverage the partnership with them to get the game tested even more and using those feedback, data, and information to plan a big bang um, early next year. Yeah. I hope that, uh, you know, Ronit and I can virtually have our avatars in the ecosystem and do our podcast from there sometime. That would be pretty pretty neat and we'll see how much our audience is paying attention to them and and to see if they, we can we can give them some unit economics but before i hand back to to Ronith to to do a summary and, and and you know take us through to the end of the episode and in the show um one very strong point of review is obviously tokenomics right um you know and if you could explain to us the fundamentals of the tokenomics of your ecosystem that'd be great are you you know adopting uh, any sort of 
uh, cryptocurrency uh, or are you generating your own with your own rules and tokenomics and reward systems for people to actually take what they earn and either spend it back in the ecosystem or even take it out of the ecosystem. I'm curious to learn more about the, the tokenomics of, of, of Mogala. Yeah, absolutely. So um, first of all, we're not creating our own cryptocurrency. Uh, we'll be creating a token on top of existing crypto protocols. So um, we will actually be going with the Ethereum protocol and we're finalizing a I would say technology partner selection in terms of a layer two who can then support us with um, the processing, gas fee, the community management, as well as some of the technology aspects. Um, we will most likely be going with one of the really big well-known ones that has not had any negative um, exposures recently. And mainly it's because when we tap into the space, it's really important to have a strong community, right? The more um, business use cases that is built on top of certain protocols will ensure the advancement of the technology, the security, because after all it's DeFi. So it's all the partners within the community kind of paying into um, the robustness and an improvement of such protocol. Um, so we will be creating tokens um, that are so actually we will be creating two tokens. That's why I say tokens. Um, one would be purely for in-game playing. So it's to fuel the economy and the loops and the activities within the game. But we'll also be introducing a more limited utility token that will actually empower the token holders to have some say in how Mogolan is designed, to have some power to vote on the roadmap, to give opinion and feedback, and also to um, enjoy certain privileges once we reach different level of successes or to participate in special events, right? And to become a, let's say, more integral part um, of the community. So there'll be these two different uh, layers of tokens. And again, the reason why we created the two layers is to lower the um, barrier of entry for people who is not ready to commit to investing in tokens to be a part of the game, right? So the lower level, um, token that is a part of the gameplay will be very easy to, to come across and someone doesn't need to pre-invest in it in order to play. Sorry, Ronit, I lied. I do have one last question. I apologize. If I'm learning on your platform, do I get any certificates or any passes saying that, you know, from any institutions that are recognized or accredited saying that I've qualified or I've actually learned something of some substance that I can contribute as a student or an intern, or perhaps even later on in you know in different aspects of my career or life. Is is that also something that's part of the the journey? Matthias, I would let you take this one. Okay. <laughs> I can uh, see you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Scar, so, so, you're spot on. Absolutely spot on. And and this is definitely something which uh, we will. Uh, or we do work on is our, let me say, learning concept, our educational, scholaring learning concept, so to say. And, and yes, at the end of the day, you will have a uh, maybe blockchain-based ID that is uh, allowing you to show to all and everybody who is maybe interested and, and useful to this, to say, okay, listen, in the maybe in an extended uh, KYC uh, account opening process that you can say, okay, I'm already educated in these kinds of markets, these kinds of topics uh, and so on and so forth. So that uh, this makes you an even more valuable customer, maybe to a future financial services institution. And or we, we should not only see that out of a European perspective, it's a global thing that we are doing here. Uh, just think about those markets who do not supply any kind of credit data for their uh, customers or population. Why not? Why not at least have that a bit game based, you know? So uh, yes, you had trainings on that. Yes, you have this and that on that, uh, and and forever loan granting, a loan distribution organization could be this could be an additional information about uh, the customer then. So yes, absolutely. And this is again why I'm saying, yes, we, we maybe leave the bank itself behind, but we do not leave the financial topic behind. And we take what we think is an absolute sweet spot to finance, which is data, 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 of course, uh, which makes uh, games exciting uh, and, and helps making cre creating exciting games on the one side, but also then the player him herself has the opportunity to say, okay, this is my experience. I can show this to you and this is my kind of play ID on Mogaland, which demonstrates and documents that I'm 
I'm savvy now, finally, you know. Um, and coming back to uh, your question, Gaurav, regarding tokonomy, well, Tracy mentioned one, one very important abbreviation in the beginning, DeFi. Yeah. Um, and DeFi we experienced so far only embedded in games very successfully, very, very successfully, because game designers, entrepreneurs, operators do fully understand the benefit of it, while bankers do think about it, uh, whether that makes sense or not. Uh, other, other millions of people are already using it. And this is what we also very much uh, impressed by and, and uh, have a close look to. Um, you know, thank you guys again. I'm, I'm very excited, uh, you know, and love to, looking forward to seeing our little avatars running around Muggerland as well. And I think it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty fun to, to see what you guys come up with and how many people, you know, take on the platform and engage with you guys uh, on this journey. So thank you for your time and really excited to see how we can also jump in on this. A lot of fun, Ronit. Back to you, brother. Sure. Just just to wrap up, maybe one last question to each of Tracy and Matthias. Tracy, um, what does I mean? Obviously, this can still evolve as you go through iterations. But what do you think the games or game games look like next year? It's a mobile app based and a desktop. Um, will there be like at some point AR VR as well? And how did you do the visual rendition? Like, is did you take one of these off-the-shelf gaming engines? That's your question. So the next one to two years. Matthias, we're sitting here and it's, I don't know, 2025 or 2027. What does it look like, the GameFi world and Mogoland in particular? Who's playing? Is it, is it my eight-year-old who's now 12? Is it Gaurav and me still trying to work out what this is all about? Who's playing? What does it look like, et cetera? So Tracy, the next 12 to 18 months and Matthias, the next five years. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in terms of the, the visual and um, the development that you're talking about, uh, we're using Unity um, to do the game development. Um, we're, hope, we're aiming for the game to be mobile first. Um, why? Because actually mobile is the fastest growing device in all gaming industry. Um, mm -hmm. Browser game is basically disappearing. PC games are decreasing significantly every year and even console usage is decreasing due to mobile, right? And mm -hmm. because we want to be able to reach out to as many people as possible, we want to be involved in people's lives. Um, this is why we took in the decision. Um, it will also be accessible via web in certain aspects of the game, such as some mm. of the third party um, partnership content that we're working on, or some um, peer versus peer tournaments are going to be accessible also via web, um, because it will be much easier for people to share that with others, right? Because it's really difficult to share an in-game activity within your mobile application. So this is due to the, the technology um, itself. All the games we're designing, so we call them mini games within this world, because we want them to be as close to hyper casual and casual games as possible, so that they're bite sized and people can pick them up, engage with the game for three minutes, 10 minutes maximum, without um, losing out on anything if they step away, right? So we're not looking at a game where someone needs to invest at least, let's say two hours per session before they can achieve certain results. Right. And these are um, some of the different design concepts we have behind. Um, one crucial thing is our um, game designer comes strictly from the gaming industry. And we're actually having our game designers work really closely with learning designers who come strictly from the education industry to combine these different expertise to really create small chunks and bite-sized content that people can still um, result in some takeaways. So um, I hope that answers your question. Yes. So Tracy, it's really mean that he's asking me, the old man on the show, about the long-term vision, right? <laughs> you have so, the long perspective, Matthias, right? That's that's my wisdom, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Give us the five hundred year view. Come on. Oh, well, well, now I feel really old. No, um, but no. Thanks for asking, Ron. It's just that it's it's really, I would say, really an exciting question because what you will see and experience today, of course, we we find that to be already super exciting, but. Once you see the full vision, it's it's what I would say it's maybe one or two percent we visible now of the iceberg. So, what is the iceberg at the end of the day uh, looking like? Of course, uh, we will 
uh, have uh, a definitely higher number of games than being experienceable on, on, on in Mogaland, I have to say. I'm always saying on Mogaland, being German, because I look always on the island, you know? So it's, <laughs> it's in Mogaland. Um, and at the end of the day, and also then coming back to your question, is it is it more like a, a, a teenager concept? Is it more, what, what is it? It's it's really a concept for all and everybody, as difficult as it might sound, actually. But it we, what we need to transport over the long course is that it's absolutely useful, helpful, and very, very meaningful that you live in Mogaland. You have, yes, you have a lot of fun there. It's all around money, right? That's what it is. Well, um, and it's helpful and meaningful to live there because you can create value you can create knowledge first of all you can create value you can maybe transfer value you can share value you can maybe use that as a bridge from real life to game world uh, and by that we speak about the metaverse then in whatever way you know and this dis in distinction but this is what we will definitely transport over the over the next years to say it is absolutely useful to live in mogaland it's not just Kind of killing your time and 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 better than smoking you know that's not what it is it is absolutely useful and helpful to be here and it will create value this is what we're here for of course we will not say this is a serious value platform no first of all we have fun it's the first time you can experience finance a very and the markets a very very fun uh, non-dangerous way and by the way it's not gamification Gaurav. it's it's really because, uh, because gamification comes up as uh, a game, but is material ex risk with it. So this is not what it is. Um, it's a platform for those people who understand that this is helpful and want to create value. And, um, and therefore, it's a platform for all and everybody, which is really international global concept. Then. We're like way over time. I have so many more questions. I'd love to chat. I know, to you. So right? It's so what much. What it's going to look like? And is it more playing or literacy or whatever? Anyway, looking forward to the alpha version, the beta version. Uh, hope we can help. Thank you so much for joining us. And Garvin, I'm looking forward to watching the journey. Yeah, and being part awesome. of it. Jumping in, trying Thank it out. Today.